Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our panel discussion titled Dimensions of Digitization in Banking. Today's discussion is focused on how business leaders can leverage fintech innovations in merchant onboarding processes and while implementing consumer adoption strategies. Fintech has completely revolutionized the basics of banking. And to analyze this topic further, I have with me two industry leaders, Rajiv Kumar K, Senior Vice President, Market Development South Asia at MasterCard, and Arpit Ratan, co-founder and business head at Signzy.com. Hi, Rajiv and Arpit. Thank you for joining us today. Hi. Um, Hi, Rudra. Let's, uh, let's start our discussion with my first question for Arpit. Arpit, the merchant uh, onboarding process has historically been a long drawn out affair, right? What are the yeah. most prominent fintech innovations that are enabling EODB for merchants? Yeah, so uh, I think if we want to understand it, uh, there has been through years a lot of processes which were involved when you were onboarding a merchant. Uh, typically, any bank would take two to three weeks in a good scenario, and sometimes it could even take more than a month uh, to onboard merchant. And there was just huge amount of paperwork, huge amount of checks that need to be done on the back end as well. Um, and I think what uh, has changed in some of the things which the government has also has really done well, uh, one of them is GST uh, in India, which has allowed for easy, quick verification of uh, the businesses. Uh, we have now adopted digital signatures, uh, which have become very prominent, especially by use uh, among businesses, which has helped. Uh, there has been, uh, I think, huge amount of and uh, this is something which is across the sector, but I think there's been a significant development of AI uh, and which has truly transformed a lot of these manual processes and made them completely automated. And that has reduced the time as we had done one of the uh, launches with MasterCard, we were able to bring this time to almost 30 minutes uh, from two to three weeks. And there has been a sea change. This is not incremental. Uh, this is a sea change. And, and the way you're onboarding merchants today is significantly different than the way you were doing them almost a year ago. So what I hear is that uh, the GST has now presented a centralized, standardized, and a credible sort of uh, data source to be able to sort of standardize this process uh, the way you're looking at it. Is that, is that correct? I mean, is that the main sea change that has happened in the last, recent past? I think no, that is one of the attributes, but uh, if you look at it, right, uh, whenever you were developing any process, there would have been, let's say, hundreds of rules that were typically being consumed by a human operations team. Mm -hmm. And that human operation team would then uh, look at each merchant file. Uh, they will try to match everything, try to run those rules uh, manually. If there was any change, they would go back and that is why it took so much time. There was just so much back and forth in the system. Anyone uh, who was trying to open an account as a business or get a POS would have gone through this pain. And one is, of course, this data is available more easily, which is because of GST. Uh, I think the sea change has come because of the advent of AI. Uh, because AI is now so advanced that a lot of these rules, a lot of these decisions which were being uh, done on a human back office and took actual time are now happening on front ends. They're happening on your mobile, they're happening on your computer screens. And because of that, uh, I think there are real time responses which have uh, reduced this back and forth in the system and brought that time to almost the time that would take a merchant to fill up a form online and do these basic checks. But yeah, GST definitely is, is a great enabler for that. So the technology is now basically available to be able to do all of that. I mean, AI has, has been a huge sort of uh, benefit in this regard is what I understand. Yeah. Um, Mr. Rajiv, uh, as per reports, uh, MasterCard has targeted 10 million merchants in India by 2020. Uh, I mean, that's this year. Uh, what are some of the most important initiatives that you have taken in this uh, regard so far? Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the question. Uh, Rudra, uh, acceptance development is one of the key pillars of our strategy in India and remains so. Uh, I'll begin with an interesting statistic which, uh, which highlights as to how we have invested and how we have powered digital acceptance in India in the past few years. While ATM 
uh, numbers have uh, remained flat at around 240,000 uh, ATMs around India. Digital acceptance at POS and online, uh, which is primarily the number of places where a customer can use their uh, cards, uh, mm. has increased from 13 lakhs in 2015 to 70 lakhs, which is a growth of five times in the last four years, four, four and a half years, which has been phenomenal. And most of this growth has come primarily from tier two and three and small towns and villages around India. And uh, what is it that MasterCard is doing? We lead in supporting the entire digital acceptance ecosystem. And we focus on five primary areas. And these are, um, I'll quickly read out uh, the, uh, the five areas where we focus. One is thought leadership and support to the entire acceptance ecosystem covering acquirers, payment facilitators, uh, POS uh, suppliers, and service providers, and fintechs like SignZ. Number two, uh, laser focused on bringing down uh, the cost of uh, POS and digital acceptance deployment. Uh, again, I'll uh, give a very interesting statistics and add to what Arpit just mentioned, and increasing the speed of POS and online acceptance deployment. Uh, these are three uh, primary ones, and we are also constantly working with uh, the regulators like RBI, METI, DFS to ensure that we support their uh, less cash India vision and a, uh, and a, and a higher digital footprint vision. Uh, and uh, the last one, uh, from, a, uh, from a speed of checkout point of view in the last few years, which has picked up speed, is uh, supporting contactless transactions, especially transactions below 2,000, uh, which is uh, a bulk of the transactions, uh, is another focus area. These are the five areas we have focused, absolutely focused, and I'll tell you where and how SignZ fits into this whole vision of ours. Hmm. Um, our partnership with SignZ began in 2017, uh, post-demonetization, when there was a huge pressure on increasing the digital footprint and, uh, uh, and helping the government to uh, get customers to use their uh, cards in their wallets at uh, many more places than uh, what it was. It was very small at 13 lakhs, uh, as I just mentioned. So we signed up with SignZ uh, as a FinTech for digital merchant onboarding uh, for India specifically, and then uh, took them and introduced them to various acquirers and payment facilitators. And we had instant success where, as Arpit just mentioned, we brought down the um, cost of acceptance by 90%. A typical cost of acceptance in India is around 2,000 to 2,500 rupees based on the traditional ways of uh, acquiring. And with Sainzi's support, we brought down that cost to less than 250 rupees because the entire paper-based uh, paper-based um, uh, paper uh, process of um, KYC went away and it was all digital, and we brought down the, uh, the cost of uh, acquiring, and we also increased the speed of acquiring merchants by 90%. What, as, uh, uh, as Arpit mentioned uh, just now, uh, was taking two to three weeks to onboard a merchant, and in some places over a month, depending on how close you are to an acquiring bank, that came mm -hmm. down to 30 minutes. So these are two important things that we could achieve with our partner with SignZ. And then we didn't stop uh, at uh, keeping SignZ uh, here in India itself. We also decided uh, we need to solve uh, similar problems globally. So we took uh, SignZ globally. We signed a global agreement with them. And uh, we are now solving uh, similar problems uh, across the world uh, in the acceptance space. And uh, from an acceptance vision point of view that you just mentioned, 10 million merchants is what we are looking at uh, um, you know, taking a box off um, and uh, making India one of the largest acceptance, digital acceptance markets. But our uh, medium term vision is to actually grow to 20 million merchants, which is what we believe is the uh, opportunity that exists in India with 70 million uh, MSMEs, out of which we believe 20 million are B2C customer facing merchants who need a digital acceptance solution. So our end vision for India is to get to 20 million acceptance locations as quickly as possible.
Right. And uh, the, 20, uh, the 10 million target of 2020, we are uh, sitting in September, uh, would you say, without giving an actual number, would you say that uh, we are well placed? We are absolutely well placed. We are looking at uh, getting to the 10 million number in the next one to two years, maxima. Wonderful. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, clearly demonetization was the was the uh, major uh, sort of uh, push or move uh, to, for this uh, change to happen in the market. I mean, uh, and the government's uh, intent is very clear. Uh, there are no two ways about it, right? And uh, but 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 to add to that, I mean, I, I understand the process started then, but to add to that, uh, the current situation, the pandemic, has really sort of uh, given it an even much faster push. I mean, all of us. Want, all, all our transactions we want to do it digitally today. Uh, people in some ways are also scared of of cash because uh, because it has understood uh, the transmission could also happen through cash. So there are many many reasons. So so you're saying that this partnership uh, happened at the right time and the results uh, have really sort of allowed there. I mean the reason that you've gone global is clearly to show that uh, this is working well, right? Absolutely for, for both partners. Wonderful. Yes. So. Uh, Thanks. So, Alfred, coming to you, uh, what operational and uh, financial inefficiencies are AI and blockchain uh, mostly targeting in terms of uh, customer, in terms of uh, merchant uh, onboarding? I mean, uh, Mr. Rajiv just mentioned a huge drop in cost from 2500 uh, to 250 per uh, per uh, merchant onboarding. That's massive yeah. uh, savings. And obviously, if you scale it up, it's a huge amount of money. So, what yeah. are these operational inefficiencies that you that you use technology for? Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, what has happened in the last decade uh, in terms of digitization is that there has been focus on user interfaces. So if you see uh, you have digitized user interfaces, whether it's your websites, apps, uh, one thing I think which has not uh, really evolved is problem solving, which is the ability for the system to also not just interface with you, uh, through a digital medium, but also to solve the problem that you're originally trying to solve. Uh, and I think that is where AI comes in or even algorithms comes in. And I think the next wave uh, of digitization has to be uh, intelligent systems. It has to be systems which are going to solve problems, not just uh, give you a great user interface, not just a great uh, design, not just a great UI, but some things which will actually solve the problem. So uh, when it comes to merchant onboarding, it's the same thing that we did. So a lot of acquirers, a lot of payment gateways uh, already had digital interfaces. So we were not solving for a digital interface. All of them had emails, all of them had websites. What we were solving for was that the problem solving was not being done through these systems. Somebody would just give data and a very dumb uh, input data input would reach a human team and then it's a human team which will process which will decide which will make a decision whether this merchant has to be given a financial instrument or not given a financial instrument and this decision was being made by a manual team and hence so much time hence so much cost um, the next wave in digitization and, and, and bias right i mean that's also very course. very important human bias is, is a huge element I, I think in India, two more things, right? Error and fraud. Um, yeah, exactly. we, we genuinely believe that uh, all financial frauds always have been uh, through human interventions. Uh, and I know it's a bold statement, but but it's historically true. Uh, and I think one of the things that you're doing by automating that decision making is also removing that human fraud uh, that creeps in. Um, and. And when you remove uh, that human intervention, you are able to uh, make that process much more uh, efficient, not only in terms of cost and time, but you're also able to bring a better user experience because user experience, if you look at Amazon, uh, Amazon is not the best e-commerce website. It's not the best looking website, but it has the best response times. It is the best to deliver your product. It can tell you accurately tell you on day one that your product is going to be delivered on 27th of September. And that uh, problem solving or that intelligent uh, is what is the next revolution, which for which you use systems like AI, you use blockchain for some of these functions. Uh, but what essentially you're trying to do is uh, systems which are intelligent and solving problems. And I think that's going to be the next wave. And that's what we did for merchant onboarding, where we were able to bring down uh, that time and that cost.
very interesting uh, what you're essentially saying is that uh, technology is not only helping uh, uh, on the supply side uh, i mean companies such as uh, mastercard etc i mean because reducing uh, process time uh, costs uh, as well but it's also uh, great for uh, the, the merchants the customers they are able to uh, get uh, onboarded much faster than what they would expect earlier and and it's transparent and fair right uh, yes. that's, that's key so this is really interesting uh, um, uh, Mr. Rajiv, coming to uh, to you and uh, and uh, Sainthi is is one fintech innovation that you have clearly leveraged uh, and it has worked very well. How has Mastercard leveraged uh, fintech innovations in order to build greater uh, uh, financial inclusion? I mean, uh, there, there are there are several other uh, opportunities and processes uh, that you have, right? Yeah, you're absolutely right, and um, I'll uh, try to paint a picture as to uh, what we're doing. Uh, way beyond uh, merchant acceptance. Um, I'll, 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 I'll try to paint a picture of that. If you right. look at uh, what's happening out, out here in India, tier two and three towns are growing 2.5 times that of metros. For instance, 70% of new digital acceptance growth is coming from tier two and three towns and villages, not anymore from the uh, big metros. That growth is done and it's behind us. Uh, for instance, we now have 25 million e-com users in India, which is mm. likely to grow to 125 million in the next few years. Most of it, again, coming from tier two and three towns and villages. Uh, as I mentioned, acceptance locations growth uh, from 13 lakh uh, locations to 70 lakh in the last four years, uh, most of it coming from uh, tier two and three towns and villages. Uh, now, for instance, we also provide uh, a very important and unique service uh, in partnership with UIDAI uh, and Aadhaar, uh, where we power uh, several state governments uh, to provide uh, DBT services to their citizens. And uh, we continue to expand uh, on that front. Um, in each of these areas that I mentioned, we have partnered with some fintech because we found uh, we do have a gap in the product or service, or we have a fintech like Sainzi, who's, uh, who, who's got the ideal solution, which suits the Indian conditions and the Indian problems that we have. And that's how we partnered, for instance, in the uh, acceptance ecosystem with Sainzi to bring down uh, the cost of acceptance and increase the efficiencies there. Likewise, we have uh, partnered with a, a company called Sintizen, uh, in order to uh, sit between MasterCard and the state government to provide uh, Aadhaar authentication uh, services, that is um, ASA, AUA services, to provide citizenry services. With another fintech uh, who is a specialist in the transit space, uh, we are solving for the transit uh, problems that we have. And uh, the way we do this is primarily through a, uh, a flagship uh, solution called StartPath, program that we have, which supports early stage fintech startups like Sainzi. Uh, we, we invested in Sainzi way back in 2018. Uh, we've been investing in several companies like Sainzi, uh, mostly Indian fintechs, uh, to solve for uh, the financial inclusion piece. And uh, proud to say, uh, we have invested in over seven uh, such companies in India, and uh, a few of them uh, have been uh, Indian assets, which we have uh, taken global. We have taken these uh, partners uh, to other markets to solve for uh, similar problems elsewhere. And uh, in order to support this, uh, what we do uh, is uh, invest a lot. Uh, you'll be pleased to note uh, we have invested in the past uh, four years over a billion dollars, around 7,000 crores, in order to build infrastructure, products, and solutions to solve for uh, financial inclusion and the challenges that we, we, we face, uh, which are of unique uh, nature uh, in our market. Very interesting. Uh, I think the, uh, the most uh, important thing of note is uh, Indian startups for Indian problems, uh, because we, which are very, very peculiar to this country. I mean, uh, this is a favor I, I note across uh, most, uh, most, uh, most uh, I think, sectors, is that uh, it is very hard for global companies and global uh, sort of solution providers to come and look at India uh, unless you have that Indian understanding of the of the challenge because it, that is often very different from what is happening globally. Uh, but but even even bigger note, uh, uh, Mr. Rajiv, is the fact that uh, these companies are now going to other markets as well. I mean, if you found a solution and you can adapt it to other uh, market conditions, why not? Uh, fabulous, uh, Arpit. Uh, uh, coming coming to you. Uh, 
how does the adoption of banking technology uh, differ from uh, among different consumer groups and how can we sort of leverage uh, fintech innovations to create more uh, financial inclusion this is take from uh, what mr rajiv said yeah uh, no i think india that way is very very unique right um, we have people who speak different languages uh, different dialects um, and i think the challenge with india is not only the technology but the adoption of the technology right. um, one of the things for example what we have done with one of our video uh, kyc solution is we have launched it in multiple languages so we would be the only solution which is available uh, in multiple regional languages um, and i think that challenge we came across because uh, when you, your application is facing the consumer um, and as rajiv was speaking that a lot of them are now coming from tier 2 and tier 3 towns uh, their proficiency in english would not be good enough for them to have a good experience and hence you need to uh, make your systems which are suitable to those geographies so for example one of the innovations we have done is that uh, we would allow the person to choose their language even before they start their journey uh, and even their entire experience is uh, in their regional language when they are onboarding uh and this this definitely helps in adoption similarly we have seen that uh among consumer groups uh when you're talk, targeting uh, for people in tech, tier 2 and tier 3 towns um mm. the bandwidth that is available and the kind of mobile phones that are available are very different and i think that was a huge learning we had in india um in fact there was one uh, interesting incident we came across there was this big solution from europe which was trying to uh, you know provide some video based service and when it finally came to a bank uh, the bank realized it will only work on the high end iphones and that would be like 0.1% of the uh, indian yeah. consumer because a lot of these european technologies assume that everyone has an iphone right or everyone has a high end phone uh, and think being in india you get this learning when you try to so today for example when we build we build for 23 types of browsers because india has like all kind of phones all kind of browsers all kind of mobile devices so i think that's that's a interesting thing being in india yeah, that you also built for 2g right i mean uh, technically we are 4g but 4g is high. i mean we know how how a 4g is so you technically have to build for a 2g ecosystem uh, in terms of internet bandwidth right no you're absolutely right in fact uh, we built our video kyc which is now i think video kyc is this big buzz uh, we actually solved to uh, make the video kyc work on a 2g connection because we had to solve it. it and now of course we've we've done some uh, technology engineering there but uh, you're absolutely right i mean uh, you cannot uh, take a video kyc which is working you know outside india and bring it to india because it just won't work uh, so you have to do these uh, you know hacks in india you have to build uh, for india uh, when it comes to scaling to tier 2 tier 3 towns Thanks, sir. But uh, my last question for Mr. Uh, Rajiv, uh, please tell us how uh, how um, has the KYC KYC process evolved and what is the future of uh, KYC? I mean, there's a lot of conversation around this, and especially using Aadhaar, etc. So, how has it evolved and what is the future of this system? Yeah, interesting question. Uh, you know, when we began our uh, partnership with SignZ, uh, we were looking to replace uh, clunky, time-consuming. physical and paper dominated uh, kyc process uh, this was indeed uh, successful uh, with the uh, partnership of sign z with e kyc where we replaced a bunch of papers and to and fro between a merchant and an acquirer uh, with e kyc which uh, certainly brought down uh, as i said the uh, cost of onboarding and increased the speed of onboarding by 90% what we are now uh, closely working with signz is to take the digital onboarding to the next level with video kyc as rp just mentioned this is the buzz and uh, along with signz and a bunch of our uh, customers uh, banks who are both acquirers and some issuers we are looking at uh, bringing uh, video kyc which is now approved by the regulators uh, and uh, this particular uh, solution Uh, has actually gathered momentum and i believe is going to be one of the most preferred ways both from uh, a banking system as well as from a consumer because uh, this will be contactless this will be paperless and remote you don't have to step out of your home 
or offers to do a uh, KYC. Uh, just a few years ago, you had to take a bunch of papers uh, multiple times to do a KYC, which changed to eKYC, where uh, Sainzi's solution would go to a merchant or a bank and then uh, onboard the customer electronically. That is now going to a video mode, uh, which I believe is the ultimate solution from a KYC point of view. How, and, how would uh, it be? How would this work? I mean, I'm, I'm very curious. To, and personally, I'm very curious to know how a video KYC would work. Please, sorry. Yeah, we have yeah we have the expert Arpit. Do you want to uh, walk through Rudra with uh, how uh, a video KYC would work? Yeah. So so I think Rudra, it's, it's as simple as the way we joined this call, right? Uh, you would get a link. You just click on that link. Uh, it establishes a secure connection uh, as a technology because you're trying to avoid fraud. This is financial, so you check for a bunch of things like VPNs, you check for negative browsers. So you have to validate a lot of things in the process. Uh, and then uh, you would ask the person to show some iCard during that process. Um, post that the AI will check the face on the video versus the ID face. It will do a bunch of algorithms to arrive at a risk score of that customer basis or the data is collecting digitally. Uh, you can use it to deliver different products. As Rajiv said, you can do it to deliver credit cards. You can do it to deliver merchant uh, accounts, etc. Depending mm -hmm. on that, you may have certain different rules. And then all this will go to a backend team uh, in real time in, in almost like two minutes of you closing that session. Uh, and then somebody would just approve uh, your account. And like in 15, 20 minutes, you're like, live with that bank. So, so essentially, it sees your face expressions to see how sort of uh, credible you are, how truthful you are, and things like that, is it? Uh, this technology. I think we have not reached there yet. Uh, I do believe uh, that okay. that can be the future. We have, in fact... Uh, um, it's really interesting. Yeah, yeah we, have, we have, in fact, done some research work on it uh, that may become a future tomorrow, you know, become actual reality tomorrow. But today, of course, you're doing uh, basis a lot of data you're collecting from systems, from the person. Mm -hmm. You, the government of India has actually allowed a lot of database being so you're collecting database from uh, the government databases, etc. The the government is extremely forward thinking in this uh, regard, which is a great, uh, which is a great plus. Uh, yeah. so the reason I ask this question is because in the advertising world, there is this technology that a lot of companies are now using to to sort of recognize your facial expressions and and see that. Uh, so this is for ad testing, right? I mean, uh, what do you recognize in an ad? Do you like it or not? And they sort of uh, look at your face expressions and, and can get a sentiment. So I'm just thinking, can that technology uh, uh, be used for, uh, for sort of this sort of a requirement as well? Uh, anyway. Yeah, yeah, I think you, you will reach there. I mean, just the, uh, you know, the, the only difference is that the level of accuracy you need to, for example, give you a loan yeah. is, is yeah. very different. Like, you, you know, you will be okay with a, 20, 30 percent uh, error margin yeah, in yeah, the yeah, yeah. but you, you won't be okay with that in a when you're giving loan to someone. Stakes are much higher, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Higher. So, for example, in yeah, Sorry, for example, yeah. Uh, AI deployments, uh, bank, uh, we had to get an accuracy of 99.9 percent. .9%. It yeah. is when the bank approved our solution, and and that's higher than a human error rate actually. Mm -hmm. So you know the the level of uh, accuracy needed sometimes is, is why certain solution is not being adopted. Uh, Mr. Rajiv, sorry, uh, you, you were saying something else at that point and we digressed uh, because I found that very interesting. Please. Sorry. Yeah, I'll, I'll just give one more example uh, because you're talking about acceptance and uh, you must have recently read about uh, one of the solutions that we launched which ties in with what we are discussing and that is a solution called SoftPost. Uh, okay. which primarily is a do-it-yourself, mobile-first and mobile-only acceptance that we have recently launched in partnership with Access Bank and Worldline. And uh, the way it works is, uh, irrespective of where the potential merchant is in India, as long as that uh, merchant has got a NFC-enabled mobile phone, uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, increasing by the minute, almost everybody has got a smartphone, as long as they've got a smartphone, and if it is NFC-enabled, uh, that merchant, in uh, partnership with a partner like Sign Z on the video KYC or eKYC, can self KYC himself or herself, uh, who's a SME sitting in some remote corner of the country, and then go and uh, um, set themselves up as a merchant, 
uh, without the need of a acquiring bank or a payment facilitator to go physically and do the onboarding of the merchant. So imagine uh, with a smartphone, a person in some remote corner of the country will be able to uh, eKYC themselves, set themselves as a digital acceptance merchant and start accepting payments, uh, link payments, tap on phone. If the mobile phone is uh, NFC enabled, uh, one can tap on the phone and pay. And all the QRs uh, is something which uh, we have recently launched. And uh, this is just not an acceptance uh, 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 you know, uh, solution. We have built a number of other things on this solution. Uh, for instance, uh, it has got cash too, uh, along with uh, uh, digital acceptance. The merchant can capture all the cash transactions on the same device, uh, can open the store as an online dukan, uh, practically mm -hmm. put up their store uh, for uh, his customers to go check and buy stuff uh, from the comfort of their homes, and, uh, uh, and several other features like this to bring down, as I mentioned earlier, the cost of uh, acceptance and increase the speed of deployment. And in order for us to get to the 20 million merchants as quickly as possible, uh, we are constantly working on all these fronts and SoftPost is an example that I just wanted to give where all these things that we are discussing, whether it is eKYC, video KYC, or self onboarding of a merchant is something which is happening in India. And we are the first country in the world to provide a comprehensive end-to-end SoftPost solution the way I just described. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rajiv. Thank you, Arpit. I think uh, uh, the, the most interesting part of this discussion is, is how uh, the industry, the financial uh, services and the fintech industry has taken this uh, challenge uh, with, with, with open arms. Uh, you know, uh, since, since uh, the, the demonetization till today, the, space, uh, the pace at which uh, digital payments uh, ecosystem has sort of evolved, grown, matured. Uh, and and uh, really, you find a lot more people being comfortable, being uh, having. Uh, so the, one of the biggest questions is definitely security and and, and faith, right? Uh, that this will work. And uh, I I think uh, this country has sort of taken it, uh, internal, internalized uh, this 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 so so in in such a strong way, uh, so that the government's vision has really sort of uh, uh, done wonderful. I mean, uh, one of the numbers that a few days back we were having a conversation with somebody in the government was that. Uh, you know, not only credit card transactions, but even even UPI and and other uh, online transactions have grown at a phenomenal uh, uh, pace over the last uh, few years. I think uh, this is a great note at, at which to leave this conversation. There's so much more to talk about, uh, but but we only have uh, so much time. Uh, this brings uh, us to the end of our discussion. A big thank you to uh, Arpit uh, and Dariji for joining us uh, today. Uh, thanks a lot. We will be back with more such content. See you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.